The French Foreign Legion was formed by royal decree on March 10, 1831, as an infantry force composed of foreign nationals to be deployed for service overseas. One of the main reasons for its formation was to round up the many foreigners considered by the French government to be troublemakers and potential revolutionaries. Some seven battalions were quickly raised and then sent to the French colonial enclave in North Africa centered around the city of Algiers. At first poorly trained and led, the local French commanders initially refused to accept the Legion as a combat unit and its men languished as common laborers. They were stationed in some of the more unhealthy spots around Algiers. Disease was rampant and deaths were frequent. But renewed attempts by the Arab population to eject the French brought a demand for frontline troops and a change in the Legion's fortunes. After a short time, they demonstrated that they could be an effective fighting force. However, soon afterwards, the bulk of the Legion was dispatched to Spain in 1835 to fight in a civil war called the First Carlos War. Of the approximately 5,000 Legionnaires sent to fight in the Carlist War, only 159 frontline soldiers returned to France in January 1839. Meanwhile, what remained of the Legion in North Africa soon found itself engaged in a full-scale war with the Arab leader Abdul Qadir. In June 1835, the French were defeated at the Battle of Makta, and to maintain the now tenuous hold over their North African possessions, reinforcements were rushed to Algiers. The Kabyle tribes were among France's fiercest opponents, and the mountainous stronghold of Constantine became a focus of opposition. In 1837, the French laid siege to Constantine. Surrounded on three sides by near vertical cliffs, it could only be approached from the south and it was here that the massed French artillery was able to make a breach in the city's walls. Among the French troops waiting to attack the breach was a Legion battalion under the command of Major Badou. One of Badou's company commanders, Captain Achille Lewal de saint anneau was an ambitious officer determined to make his mark in the North African campaign. In a letter to his brother, saint anneau described the Legionnaire's assault on Constantine. We had just arrived at the breach when there was a shattering explosion, followed by the silence of the grave. Those still on their feet were staggering, blinded by gravel, powder, momentarily suffocated. In a matter of seconds, however, a terrible spectacle was enacted before our eyes. Those wounded but still capable of walking appeared crying out with pain from the debris. I was amazed that our men stood firm. Combe and Badu raised their swords. I heard them shouting, forward, forward. I took up the cry myself, calling out to my men. To me, the Legion, at them with the bayonet, forward, forward, and began to run towards the swirling clouds of smoke, expecting to be blown to bits, convinced I was that a second mine would go up at any moment. Seven Turks were firing at us from loopholes in the walls. They discharged their muskets in our faces, but we bayoneted them as they were trying to reload. There was no question of taking prisoners. I then doubled my men in the direction of the heaviest firing, and arrived outside the house of Ben Aisa, the Bey's lieutenant. Major Badu was already there and, as we looked for the best way to penetrate still more deeply into the town, bullets rained down on us, bouncing like hail off the cobbles. While Badu and Saint Arnoux rallied their legionnaires, News reached them of the erection of a barricade at the end of an alley, where the Kabyle defenders were going to make their last stand. saint Arnoux continues his account. Advancing towards the end of the alley, I saw that we were being held up by a barricade consisting of wrenched off doors, beams and mattresses, everything one could think of defended ferociously by the Kabyles. Going back to my men, I told them that by charging with the bayonet, they would lose far fewer than by creeping forward and firing ineffectually into a pile of mattresses. I then put my marksmen into houses, from which they could fire over the barricades down to the defenders, and sword in hand, shouting, forward the legion, charged. I reached the barricade, climbed it and fell flat on my face in the middle of a group of Arabs. The fall saved my life, as the shots fired at me were too high. Even so, I was so near the musket barrels that my overcoat was singed, and my scabbard hold. It was while I was still on the ground that I heard a soldier call out, save the captain, he's wounded. But I got to my feet and started to carve up Turks with my sword as my men destroyed the barricade, opening up a passage into the very street that the first column had been repulsed. Once again, saint Arnoux reorganized his troops and then pressed on along the street. My first action was to establish my sharpshooters on either side, firing crossways, but men were dropping all the time. 
After not more than 20 paces, we were stopped by a really intense fire coming from a big house on the right, which seemed literally a flame. So continuous were the flashes coming from it. I later learned that it was the barracks of the Bay's guard. There was nothing to do but take it by storm. We battered in the doors and plunged into the courtyard, broke into the rooms, climbed the stairs. What a sight. What slaughter, blood everywhere, not a murmur from the dying. One killed or was killed in that state of frenzy, which makes a man grit his teeth and stifle a groan from the very depths of his soul. After the house was cleared, Santarnu and the legionnaires advanced deeper into Constantine. I was attacked by the Turk whose yet again I sent you. His pistol was jammed and he threw himself on me, blade raised. I parried his cut, lunged, and my point entered his neck. One of my men, Keller, who was just behind me, leaped forward and plunged his bayonet into the body. At that moment, he was hit by two bullets, and the poor boy died for me, since it was at me that the bullets were aimed. A third bullet hit the greatcoat I was wearing, slung bandolier fashion. We advanced slowly against redoubled fire. In vain I tried to charge, crying forward. My men were mown down, and it was in this unhappy position that Sergeant Major Droz, at the head of a handful of volunteers, captured a banner, killing all its defenders, and thus earned the cross for which I recommended him. Again, I rallied my men, and they followed me, bayonets leveled. But at last, the Turks had had enough. They fled and the street was cleared. We chased them down a number of alleys until we arrived at a small square where I found Major Badu, the battalion commander. Happy to see each other alive, we shook hands warmly. I was just going to advance down another alley when an Arab suddenly appeared waving a piece of paper and crying, Karta, Karta. The man was a son of a sheik. It was all over. The town had surrendered unconditionally. Santarnu was decorated for his bravery and stellar leadership while the banner captured in Constantine was transferred to Paris where it remains today. The fall of Constantine did not end Kabyle resistance, however, and fighting was to continue for the next two decades.